Hi friends, welcome to LGF. Well, thanks a lot for your appreciation. We are getting lots of comments and likes. Friends, here I have seen some comments over that some people are having doubts whether we will complete the control system or not and whether we will complete the control system before the gate exam or not. As I told you in the last lecture, please feel free because the control system I'll cover soon. Okay, some people are asking that please provide the videos on the daily basis. Friends, let me tell you one thing. I'm the working fellow. Okay, so it's very hard to get time. But still I'm recording the videos. And I'll try my best to provide you video daily. And some people are asking about the time frame. So I can say uh, before 10th of October I'll cover the control system. Because in our covering there is one point... I have to maintain the quality. Okay. So I can't compromise with the quality. I have to provide lots of questions to you people so you can enhance your knowledge with the control system. But still, I'm trying my best to provide you videos on daily basis. But sometime it will be not possible, as you can understand. So please keep patient. We'll soon cover the control system. Okay. And I'm giving you assurance then. I am here only. I'll not go anywhere. I'll complete your control system before get examination. Okay, friends. Again, I'm saying thank you for your appreciation. It's really needed. Why? Because it motivates me to go beyond my limitations. Thank you. Let's start the session today. Friends, last time in the last class, we discussed about open loop control system, closed loop control system. We have seen the formula for transfer function. We have seen the Laplace and method of analysis, right? Why we have seen the Laplace transform? This one is very important because the definition of transfer function we have seen the Laplace transform of the output divide by the Laplace transform of input provided all initial conditions are zero. Okay. So, what we'll see today. So, in today's lecture, I'll cover standard. We'll see the standard format of transfer function. Then we'll discuss about the poles and zeros and we'll take some problems. Okay. So, let's start the session. The standard format of the transfer function is, you know, the transfer function the transfer function is cs divided by rs it's denoted by gs okay so in the box format or in the block diagram i can write inside of the function or the system is gs here we are taking out cs i'm going to provide rs to it Okay, so the transfer function GS is CS by RS. Now, what is the standard form format to write the transfer function? In the control system, always we will find the control uh, system transfer function in the format like S minus S1, S minus S2, S minus S3 divide by and it's so on like this i'll divide this by s minus s a s minus s b s minus s c okay this is the standard format to represent the transfer function so in this format what is this k this k is the gain constant of the system what about this s minus s1 S minus S2, S minus S3 terms. So, these are the zeros. These are the zeros of system. And this in the denominator, these are the poles. Okay. So, if I'll talk about S equal to S1, S2, S3 and so on. These are the zeros of transfer function. And if I'll write S equal to SA, SB, and so on, these are the 
poles of transfer function so can i say the transfer function is always uh, or sorry always represented in the form of zeros and poles is it okay to you now friends if you observe this carefully you can find out suppose let's take transfer function wait a minute I'm taking the transfer function s plus 3 divided by s plus 2 s plus 1 this is the transfer function given right here s equal to minus 3 is your zero okay and s equal to minus 2 and minus 1 these are the poles okay if you'll take the s domain so at minus 1 we are getting at minus 1 and minus 2 we are getting poles minus 1 minus 2 and at exactly minus 3 we are getting zero so the zero is represented in this way and this is the representation of poles okay so in the control system if see this is the numerator in the numerator we have zeros in the denominator we have number of poles okay so this transfer function will be proper strictly proper the transfer function will be strictly proper if n is greater than d if n is greater than d sorry when denominator is higher than numerator d is higher than numerator so when the transfer function will be proper when polynomial of denominator is greater than the polynomial of numerator then it will be proper transfer function okay friends now what if d is equal to n in this case the transfer function will be this is the first case here the transfer function is strictly proper strictly proper but in the second case it will be proper only okay when the polynomial of numerator and denominator are equal then it will be proper and in the third condition it will be improper if the condition of improper transfer function this condition when this denominator is less than numerator in this case it will be improper transfer function so if i'll talk about the example so here this transfer function given over here this is the strictly proper okay why strictly proper because see here in the denominator the polynomial power is higher than the numerator power okay if all take a plus 4 over here then it will be proper if i'll take a plus 5 over here then it will become improper transfer function is it clear to you now one more condition i would like to say you about this transfer function and that is the power of numerator and denominator should be same means the transfer function should be proper in general okay so what it indicates suppose you have given with the transfer function let me take one transfer function a plus 1 a plus 2 a plus 3 s plus 4 and s plus 5 this is the strictly proper transfer function given over here here if i'll ask what is the number of poles so the number of poles are 3 okay the number of poles are 3 over here and what is the number of zeros it's 2 and what i told you 
for a proper trans the transfer function should be proper in general it means p should be equal to z poles should be equal to zero but here in this case the poles are higher than zeros so here one more zero will be there and that zero will be at infinity okay what i'm saying is if you'll take the s plane in the s plane if you are going to write this s minus 1 your pole s minus 2 okay sorry these are the zeros these are the zeros over here now minus 3 minus 4 and minus 5 minus 3 minus 4 and minus 5 these are the poles so one more zero will be there and that zero will be at infinity okay so this is the condition that p should be equal to so this is the gate question a transfer function has two zeros at infinity then the relation between numerator degree n and denominator degree m of transfer function is you have four options n equal to m plus 2 n equal to m minus 2 n equal to m plus 1 n equal to m minus 1 so friends just we have discussed about this if you have poles greater than 0 it means for the remaining pole means up to p minus z it will be okay no problem at all what i am saying is let's take like if you have p equal to 3 if you have z equal to 1 but it means it means you need for the proper transfer function you need two more zeros because p should be equal to z but you have a deficiency of two zeros that's why two zeros are at infinity okay so what is this if the zeros means the zeros are in numerator degree of zeros are n the degrees of poles is m in denominator it's m so pole poles are two higher than zeros then only the two zeros will be at infinity are you getting me so can i write over here n plus 2 equal to m can i write like this two zeros are infin at infinity it means we are having two extra poles is it okay if you have one pole and one zero then will there any zero at infinity no if you have five poles and five zeros will there any zero at infinity no but if you have six poles and four zeros in this case exactly two zeros will be at infinity so this is the case where n plus 2 equal to m okay this is the degree of m this is n so this p is 2 higher than this so n plus 2 equal to m do we have any option n plus 2 equal to m here it's given okay I can write this n equal to m minus 2. This is the one mark get question. Okay, friends, so related to this. So, what is the concept? The concept says this that p should be equal to z for any transfer function. If you have deficiency of zeros, you can consider them at infinity. Okay, and in the control system, we'll never deal with improper transfer function. Improper transfer function means z greater than p. In the control system, we'll not discuss about this. Okay, so please do not ask this question. What if zeros are 6, poles are 3? This is the improper transfer function. Okay, so let's come to the next now now we will see the property of transfer function you have seen the transfer function the laplace transform of the output wait a minute we have seen the transfer function cs by rs 
equal to gs. This is transfer function, right? Now we'll see the properties of this transfer function. Okay. So what are the properties of transfer function? For the rational transfer function, the total number of zeros are equal to total number of poles. We have seen just now and based on this property, we have question and gate. Okay. Z should be equal to poles for the rational transfer function. What is the second? The transfer function is defined only for the LTI system. If your system is linear time invariant system, then only we can define the transfer function. Or in other words, then only we can write the transfer function for the particular system. Okay. Now, it is not defined for the non-linear or time variant system definitely. If your transfer function is going to define for the LTI system, so it will be undefined for the non-linear system. This one is very important and for the IES, it's very important actually. Okay, let's come to the next one. So the transfer function is also called the impulse response of the system. Very, very, very important. In the question, they will give the, you know, for the system parameters, they will give the input and output. They will ask the transfer function. So they will not ask to find out the transfer function. They will ask, find out the impulse response. So impulse response is nothing but the transfer function. Why? What is the impulse? You have seen the impulse denoted by this delta t has infinity at t equal to 0 and 0 otherwise. Okay. Now, what the statement is, if you have gs, you have cs, here you are applying unit impulse. And uh, you people know about this. The Laplace transform of unit impulse is nothing but 1. So over here it's 1. Now the transfer function is Cs divided by Rs. Cs is as it is. Rs is 1. So in this case, see transfer function is equal to cs so cs is impulse response response means at output what we are getting okay so in this case when you are applying the unit impulse as the input you are getting output is equal to the transfer function so that's why i'm calling over here the transfer function is also called the impulse response okay very important now for the transfer function, all initial conditions of the system set to zero. This is the most condition. In the last class, we discuss about this. This is the two time get questions also. Right. Now, the transfer function is independent of the input of the system. What input you will apply at the system or at the input stage do not matter with the system. Why? Because this, the transfer function is belong to the system quality. Is it okay? This is not related to input or output. So don't confuse yourself that if input will be high, then transfer function will be low. Okay. So there is a not this relation. This is, this transfer function is the system property, not input and output property. Okay. And this is the fixed property. Right. Now, the system transfer function has zeros and poles. Just now we have seen the standard format of the transfer function in which we have seen number of zeros and number of poles. So I, I hope it's clear to you. So what it's saying, the system transfer function has zeros and poles with positive real part. So the system is called the minimum phase system. Okay, so if your zeros and poles are positive real, then the system is minimum phase system. If the system transfer function has zeros and poles in the right side of the S plane, positive real means in the minimum phase, you will get poles and zeros in the left hand side. in the left hand of the S plane. This is the S plane I'm talking about. Okay. So, here if the 
zeros and poles are in the right hand side of the s plane then non minimum phase if they are in the left hand side of s plane please correct it this is not positive the, here it should be negative right if your poles and zeros with negative real part here in this case we are getting negative here it's a positive real it's plus it's negative so it should be negative okay so if you are having the negative real part the system is minimum minimum phase system okay and if you have in the right hand side your system will be non minimum phase so again i'm doing it for you if your transfer function pole or zeros are given in the right of s plane so it will be non minimum it will be non minimum phase okay and if they are over here it will be minimum phase transfer function minimum phase okay so i hope it's clear right now come to the next one and that is the method of analysis we have seen the transfer function if we'll analyze the system we should be knowing about the transfer function and one is state variable this is state variable is our sixth unit we'll discuss there only in this unit we have transfer function approach only okay so the next point is we'll discuss about the transfer function approach we'll discuss about the disadvantages of the transfer function then we'll come to the block diagram and all okay means we'll start the problems so what are the advantages of the transfer function approach so it gives simple mathematical equation we have seen the simple mathematical equation in which we have given with gs simple in the form of s minus s1 so on here s minus s a like this okay now the second point is it gives poles and zeros of the system directly see the poles here it's zeros here these are the poles okay so in the later stage in the control system in the th fourth unit we'll discuss about the stability also so there these poles and zeros will be very crucial okay so i can say stability of the system can be determined easily okay friends now we have some disadvantages also as you know we have seen the transfer function we can find for the lti system only so disadvantage is it is applicable only for the lti system not for non lti system okay friends so it does not take initial condition into consideration this is another problem with tf approach we don't have uh, see we have to consider the initial condition zero always if you have to find out the transfer function again i'm writing the same the transfer function is output divide by input in the laplace domain provided all initial conditions are zero two times get question if you are lucky enough you can get this time also okay the function for the closed loop okay so we represent the closed loop in this format this is the transfer function of the forward block okay let me change the pen color wet this is the forward block transfer function okay here i'm taking output cs okay at the input stage this is the summer or mixer over here i am applying input ras and though this is the closed loop transfer function definitely there will be there will be some feedback okay and feedback element transfer function i'm taking hs this i'm going to provide over here mixing the output signal to input signal so this feedback i can take negative and positive both 
but in the control system we use negative feedback why because negative feedback has its own advantages many advantages okay we use the positive feedback in the oscillator and schemic triggers only mainly we'll use the negative feedback okay later we'll discuss about this in details so it's okay here we are applying the input rs its output cs the forward block transfer function is given by gs okay in the feedback path the transfer function is taken as hs we are feeding to the input this is the mixing level this is mixer or you can say this is summer also okay this is sampling this thing is sampling and this point you can say this is the branch point this point is branch point and this process over here is sampling so at the output stage we are doing sampling at the input stage we are doing mixing okay now let's derive the formula for transfer function this is the closed loop control system i think you people will agree with me the closed loop con control system is nothing but the forward transfer function one feedback is given to the input from the output also now we'll see what is this this is the error signal es this error signal will be given by input minus feedback because this minus i'm considering over here so okay so friends let's take this signal is bs okay let me change the color of the pen okay this is the bs i considered right so can i write this es is here is the es this es is rs minus bs here is the mixer so what this mixer is doing the bs will be subtracted from rs here is the equation 1 okay now what is this bs this bs is hs into cs okay hs into cs this is about the bs what about cs itself this cs is gs into es okay gs into es i'll put the es value from the equation 1 so it will be like gs es is rs minus bs perfectly fine this gs i'll take this side so i'll get cs by gs this is nothing but transfer function okay and you will get rs minus bs what is rs over here hs into cs so rs minus hs into cs over here okay friends now wait a minute if you like find the transfer function you will get gs 1 plus hs gs just arrange these values in this form so you will get transfer function of the closed loop control system is gs divided by 1 plus hs gs this is the very important formula you have to remember this formula always so for this system the transfer function directly will write the forward gain gs divided by 1 plus hs gs hs gs so we are using negative feedback over here so here i am getting plus instead of plus if you have positive feedback this is the negative feed feedback instead of this if you have positive feedback you will get gs equal to 1 minus hs gs okay and and i told you we are not using the positive feedback because we are having the positive 
feedback special cases only we are using in the oscillator and in schemic triggers okay now friends now let's come to the open loop transfer function the closed loop is over the second will be open loop the open loop transfer function open loop transfer function is nothing but gs this is the gs like this you are going to provide over here input rs we are taking output cs so this is nothing but your open loop transfer function okay so open loop transfer function is nothing but gs what about the closed loop transfer function the closed loop transfer function is gs divided by 1 plus hs gs is it okay to you now friends if you have closed loop transfer function you can convert into the open loop if you have open loop transfer function you can convert into the closed loop okay what i mean is if in the open loop control system if you are adding the feedback with feedback element hs the closed loop transfer function will be this but what if you have given with the closed loop transfer function and someone is asking what is the open loop transfer function okay so the best method to find out that c wait a minute suppose in the open loop transfer function you have numerator and denominator correct in this format you have open loop transfer function if you will find out the closed loop transfer function so it was gs divide by 1 plus n by d suppose you have unity feedback so h is equal to 1 over here so this is n d plus n for the closed loop transfer function it is numerator divided by denominator plus numerator for the open loop it's a numerator divided by denominator as simple as that okay but if you have closed loop transfer function like numerator by denominator and someone is asking the open loop transfer function so the best way to write this n equal to n n divided by d minus n denominator minus numerator here it's a denominator plus if you have open loop transfer function and you are going into the closed loop transfer function here you have closed loop transfer function and you are going to open loop transfer function so in this case you can use this function directly okay so let me take one gate problem now so friends let's come to this problem the problem says the open loop transfer function the open loop dc gain dc gain we'll discuss about what is dc gain of a unity feedback unity feedback means hs equal to 1 given over here okay the system with closed loop transfer function is given for this open loop dc gain find out the open loop dc gain of a unity feedback system with closed loop transfer function is this and your options are given 4 by 13 4 by 9 4 and 13 okay so how you will do this is asking the dc gain for the open loop what is the dc gain dc means you know for the dc the frequency term is zero and s is nothing but j omega so s will be zero s is nothing but the frequency term okay friends so for the dc gain in the transfer function you have to write omega tends to zero so you will get the dc gain whatever gain you will get in this condition that will be dc means if your frequency tends to zero your gain will become the dc gain 
But here in this case, they have given with the closed loop transfer function, they are asking for the open loop. So as we discussed earlier, if the closed loop transfer function is given, let me change the pen over here. Okay. So if the closed loop transfer function is given, gs by hs or numerator divide by denominator in this format. So open loop transfer function will be numerator denominator minus numerator. So first on, first find out the open loop transfer function. Let's denote it by gs. What is n? This is the closed loop transfer function given over here. Numerator is simply s plus 4. No problem at all. Now denominator. Denominator is a square 7s plus plus 13 minus numerator. So minus s minus 4. So finally your gs is s plus 4 s plus 4 s square plus 6s plus 9. Am I correct? Now can you find out the dc again? Yes. Easily you can find out now. Let me take over here. So gs at omega equal to 0. So it will be put s equal to 0. When omega equal to 0, s is also 0. So it will be 4 plus 0 divided by 0 plus 0 plus 9. So finally you have 4 by 9. This is your dc again and this is your answer. I hope it's clear. So friends, let's, let's come to this. The question is asking, what is the unit step response? Unit step, okay. Of a continuous system whose transfer function has 0 at minus 1, a pole at minus 2 and a gain factor of 2. So what is the standard format of transfer function? Or you can find the transfer function of the uh, given system. It is k, the 0 at 1, so it is s plus 1, divided by pole at 2, this is s plus 2, and this gain factor is also given, it's 2, so s plus 1, divided by s plus 2. This is the transfer function. Is it clear to you? Now he is asking the unit step response. So you have the transfer function. What you have? You have the transfer function of this block here we are going to apply input I'm taking output he's asking for the response response means output you have to find out what is your input its unit step so what is the Laplace transform of the unit step 1 by s I hope you know about this this is the signal and system part Okay, we'll discuss in the control system also. So, all your doubts will be cleared. Okay. Now, the transfer function, you have the input you have. What is the CS? The relation is CS is nothing but transfer function multiply with 1 by S. What is the transfer function? It is 2S plus 1 divided by S plus 2 into 1 by S. Okay. So, if we will divide this, so by the partial fraction, you will get, let's take it y s output. Okay, it will be 1 by s plus 1 by s plus 2. This is your system response for the unit save input. Okay, now we'll discuss about some standard test signals. Okay, friends. So, first is step signal. Step signal, as you know, the step is unit step function, ut is defined as the value of ut will be 1 for all t greater than 0 and it will be 0 for t less than 0 and at t equal to 0 it's not defined but we always take the average value 
at t equal to 0. Okay. How graphically it represented? So, this is the unit step I am considering. The magnitude is 1. So, this is the unit step. You can see like this. Okay. For t greater than 0, the value of this is 1 everywhere up to infinity. For t less than 0, its value is 0. Okay, this is the unit step. So, what is the Laplace transform of unit step? Again, I am saying that I assume you know the Laplace transform. Though this is the mathematics part. So, the Laplace transform of the unit step is 1 by S. We just use this one in our one of the questions, right? Now, let's come to the ramp. The second one is ramp signal. Okay. So, the ramp signal is denoted by RT. Its value will be T for T greater than 0. It will be 0 for T less than 0. How will represent it? If this is RT, time axis, this is T, slope 45 on line equation, this is RT. RT is nothing but T. Is it okay? I hope it's clear to you. Now, if you'll find the Laplace transform of RT, it will be 1 by S square. Okay. And if RT is given in the form of some constant or gain is also given over here, suppose, wait a minute, let me change the pen. Suppose over here it's AT. So, it will become, instead of 1 by S square, it will become a by s square. I hope it's clear to you. The same thing is over here also. Instead of unit step, if you have kut, so that k will reflect in the output also. Means in the Laplace transform also. Okay. The next signal is periodic. Oh, sorry, parabolic. It's parabolic signal. Parabolic signal RT is given with its a t square by 2. Here I am considering gain a. Okay. So, it is t square a t square by 2 when when t is greater than 0. Else, it will be 0 or t less than 0, it will be always 0. So, if you will see the graph of this, it will be like this. It's a parabola. Okay. And the value will be given in the first quadrant only. It means when t is greater than 0. When t is less than 0, everywhere the value of this parabola is 0. Okay, friends. Now, the last one is unit impulse. So, let's come to the unit impulse also. Let me clear this unit impulse, right? So, unit impulse function del t, its value will be infinity at t equal to 0. Okay, this is the magnitude given. For the unit impulse, the magnitude, magnitude is infinity always and for 0 always if t is not equal to 0. Okay, but area of this unit impulse from minus infinity to infinity is always 1. Okay, area of the unit impulse is 1 always. How you will write this or how you will represent the form of graph? It will be, it is t. This is your unit impulse at t equal to 0 only it's defined. This is t equal to 0, t greater than 0, 
t less than 0. For the t less than 0, everywhere value is 0. For t greater than 0, greater than 0 the value is 0. And at, at t equal to 0, the value is infinity. Okay. So, friends, here I can say the Laplace transform of impulse response. It's impulse response. It's nothing but what? The transfer function we have just seen that uh, impulse response is nothing but the transfer function. If I'm talking in terms of transfer function, I have to the, take the Laplace transform of the impulse response. Okay. And this is given by Cs by Rs. So I So let's come to this problem now. The problem is given. What is the transfer function? So this is the differential equation given. Okay. So this is again Laplace transform based equation. Right. But you can write over here in the form of, La if you will convert this in the L domain, it will be S square Y S. I am not considering the initial values because I have to find out the transfer function. It is asking for the transfer function and in the transfer function, we do not consider the initial values. So, it will be 3 Y S over here. It is 2 Y S. I am sorry, I forgot to take S over here. It will be U S plus S U S. Okay. Now, Y S denoted the output. U S is denoted to input. So, I need the Y S by U S. So, Y S is coming common from all these three terms. You have remained with S square 3 S plus 2. Over here, you can take U S common you will get 1 plus s. You need the transfer function. So, you have to take this us down. ys divided by us equal to transfer function and it is given by s plus 1 divided by s square plus 3s plus 1. Is it okay? So, is this clear to you? Now let's come to this problem. Here it's given relation between xt and yt of a system is given as here again so these are the four options given. Okay. So, how you will solve it? Again, you will apply the Laplace formulas. How to solve this? It will be S square Y S. This is the time shifting e to the power minus 2 S. Please go to the properties of Laplace transform. Okay. So, it will be easy to you, easy to understand. S square X S. Okay. So, they are asking the transfer function. You need transfer function is nothing but output divided by input. Input is x s over here. So, I will keep y s over here this side only. I will come with the x s this side. So, you will remain with s square plus e to the power minus 2 s divided by s square. You will divide s square so, it will be 1 plus e to the power minus 2s by s square. Where is the option? So, this is the first option. Okay. So, I hope it's clear. We will see the fundamental properties of block diagram. How to use them. Then we will see uh, switch. So, what is the block diagram? Actually, this transfer function of any system is represented by the block. 
this technique is nothing but the block diagram representation of any system to this system you will take output denoted by cs you will apply input to this system let's take rs so this is input and this is output okay so this is the transfer function transfer function we also know that gs gs is equal to cs by rs this is open loop transfer function if instead of open loop you have closed loop let's take the closed loop in the closed loop you will have the feedback element also and you will feed to the input you will use negative feedback here it's rs here it's cs and suppose the transfer function is gs so in this case your transfer function will be gs divided by 1 plus hs gs is it clear to you so so the block diagram representation of any system if you are writing the system transfer function in this way in the block representation we call the block diagram so here we have properties of it so let's discuss about that okay so represent this the cascade form so the blocks will be in this way this is the cascade representation actually the blocks are connected in series in this way like this let's take the transfer function of the first block is g1s it's g2s it's g3s okay and to the cascade connection of this you are applying the input here you are taking out your output so this entire representation this system represent the cascade of the blocks is it okay inside of it three blocks are cascaded so the question is what will be the transfer function so the property says if you will find this type of condition your transfer function will be multiplication of all this okay means cs divided by rs will be multiplication of all this g1s g2s and g3s is it okay so if your blocks are connected in cascade you can multiply them okay if they are connected in cascade you have to multiply them I hope it's clear to you right now what if blocks are in parallel form this is the parallel combination okay so if the blocks are connected in this way the path is same for all from input to output input to output in this case the transfer function cs by rs will be addition or summation of individual blocks means g1s plus g2s plus g3s so here if the blocks are in parallel you can add the individual transfer function okay if they are connected in cascade you can multiply the individual transfer functions okay so friends it's all about the today's lecture the more we'll discuss in the next video lecture we'll see the transfer function of the block diagram and sfg format okay in the next video lecture